Making print-on-demand designs shouldn't be complicated. In fact, it should be fun. So in this video, I'm going to walk through Creative Fabrica Studio and how you can use this cool tool to really punch up your print-on-demand designs and have some fun doing it. I'm gonna offer you five print-on-demand tips. These are big picture ideas to help you make the most of your print-on-demand journey using Creative Fabrica Studio. Okay, if you're new to Creative Fabrica Studio or if you've never heard of Creative Fabrica Studio before, that's okay, you're in the right place. I'm Zen Water Cooler, the channel is Zen Water Cooler. I talk all about print on demand stuff. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering Creative Fabrica Studio, which is an awesome resource. You can try it for free. I'm gonna put a link to Creative Fabrica Studio in the video description below, just a heads up. It is an affiliate link, and that just means if you click on the link and you purchase either the all access subscription or anything on Creative Fabrica, like any of their assets, they've got awesome fonts, and illustrations, I would receive a small commission. I'm a proud ambassador of Creative Fabrica. Let's jump in and check out Creative Fabrica Studio. Print on demand tip number one is using the artboards. Here I am in the main page. I'm gonna go over here to the top right and click add new design. And when I do that, it's gonna ask me now for the different artboard sizes here, which one do I want? Well, there's a print on demand preset right here on the left hand side. So I can look at a Merch by Amazon preset, that's 4,500 by 5,400 pixels, or I could go down here to Display Standard, T Public. there's a whole bunch of different ones. You can also work over on the right-hand side and you could do a custom setting as well. So I could do something like 2,400 by 2,400 if that's what I wanted to do. There's all sorts of options here. There's also an orientation piece. So if I were to put in, say, a taller, design like 5,000 by 2,400. You'll see it flips it now to portrait, but I could do landscape as well. And you'll see now it flips the width over to 5,000. So when I click create new design, we're going to see now the artboard is now set. Now you can change the artboard if you want. So right here at the top, if I accidentally you know, close this out, you'll notice this little button over here now just becomes grayed out. Just click that button and your artboard will come back. You can now change this as well. If I click on it, I can now change my actual design specifications to 2500 by 2500 for example click apply and we'll see now it changes so don't stress too much if you're working away on a different design here and all of a sudden you think man i'd really like to change the artboard size not a problem just go up here to the top make sure that's selected on that's your artboard slider and then you can simply make this wider skinnier taller shorter whatever you like I did want to mention you can change the artboard color as well. It's just basically a background. So over on the left hand side, there's a background option. When you click on it, there's background palettes here at the top and they've got some defaulted, but you can also click the little pen button. And when that happens, they've got different colors here at the bottom or a slider. So I could select anything inside. I can even enter a hex code which is like a numerical value. So if you've got the hex code, you can do that. And by simply touching on the palette here, you can change your background color to whatever you like. And then in addition to this, if you click outside of that, there's also actual backgrounds. So you can click on the actual background and you could have that be the style as well. If you don't like that background, you can change it over in the layers panel. So for example, I've got a red background, but let's say I didn't want that background. I can delete it, the little trash can button, and now I've got another background in its place. You'll notice you can't move the background, but if you click the little lock button, which is over in the layers panel, now it just becomes a regular picture. So I could make this a bit larger, a bit smaller, I could rotate it, I can do whatever I want, just like a regular picture. Print on demand tip number two is to use a PNG background in your t-shirt design or your print on demand design. So here I've got my same example, and let's say I really wanted to make a t-shirt design now with this element right here. This won't look that great on a t-shirt because the background design is a big rectangle and it's gonna make it look strange on a t-shirt. So what I wanna do is get rid of my background. I'm gonna delete that out. And then I've got this colored background now, like the actual artboard is colored. So how do I save this now as a PNG? Well, over on the top left, there's a little three horizontal bar menu. And when I go to download, it's going to ask me to download right here. And if I download as a PNG file, I have the option now to remove the background. So now I'll click PNG, and that will now save this as a PNG without the actual background coming into play. 
What I would recommend you do if you're working in print on demand is to make sure the artboard is set up to be the proper size. So I'm going to make this now 4500 by 5400. So that's the Merch by Amazon background size. I'm then going to change the background color to white. And now I'm going to make my design so that if I save it as a PNG file, at least I'll know that the overall framework of the design, even though it's going to be blank, the white won't show up, at least it'll be fitting inside the print on demand template. I'm going to insert some text and just like that, I've now got a nice t-shirt design. It's a white background, but I don't really care because when I go up to the menu, I click download, download, remove background, and now I can only save it as a PNG file and that's what I want. There it is there, I'll save it, and that looks great on a t-shirt or a fine art print. Print on demand tip number three is centering your design or aligning your design. So here I've got a Merch by Amazon design. I've got my Cupid here and I'm trying to manually make sure it's all centered. You can do that. By moving this design, you'll see a dotted line comes up when you're near the middle of the design. In fact, when you're exactly at the center of the design. So that tells me now I'm centered. There's an alignment button right here at the top. So when you click outside of the design, it's not gonna be there, but when you click on the actual element, you'll see this pops up here at the top, this little menu. And the left one here is called alignment and layers. So I'm gonna click on that. We can see there's a align center button right there and that will move it perfectly right into the middle. You can also right align it and you can left align it. So I'm gonna move this to the top. I don't need to be worrying about the little dotted line. I can just simply click the align button, align center, and now my life goes on. Same thing here with the text. When I click on the text, you're gonna see over here at the left-hand side, there's an alignment button right here. I'll click middle and then foxy. Maybe I want that just over here to the right, but I don't want it to the right of the design. I want it to the right of the text. Okay, I click my text, hold down the shift key, click the other text, and now I can write a line. When I click write a line, it's going to align to the felon because that's the rightmost piece of the design. So when you have just one piece, one element, you'll go to the page, but if you have two elements, it'll go to each other. There's also ruler options here at the top. So when I click this little button right here, it's gonna say show rulers or show grid. When I click show rulers, you'll see rulers will now come up. This won't be visible when you export your image, but that's a nice feature. There's also show grid and the grid option will pop up as well. Print on demand tip number four is all about text. Here I've got a design. Maybe we're doing like a baby announcement, for example. I'm gonna click over here on the left-hand side and I'm gonna click text. And from here, you've got a couple different options. If you click heading, which is this button right here, it's just gonna give you a basic big text look. You can just click delete if you wanna get rid of that. I'll click text again. And now I can go to subheading. That just gives me a little bit smaller, same generic piece here. And you'll notice over on the right hand side, the layer is sitting right there. You can also just delete the layer if you want, and that'll get rid of it as well. I'll click text one more time and you'll see body. That's the tiniest text that will come up. So you've got three different presets that you can use. That's really helpful if you're creating like say a newsletter or a social media post, you have those three default settings. In addition to that, you've got some templates here that are down below and you, that's kind of nice because you can just click one and then you can make it nice and big, move it on down, and you can see you've got different fonts here. To change the actual text, you simply double click it and then you can type inside of it. So I'm gonna say, welcome. I'm gonna stretch it out by clicking on the corner of the text right there. I can make this a bit bigger, stretch it on out. And then this one down here, I'm gonna double click it and I'll have my name of my baby right there. Now you can make this larger or smaller pretty easily just by dragging the corner of the text and then you can also make it smaller or larger the actual box. So you can play around with it and pretty quickly make the text exactly how you want. Now there's some text features as well that are pretty nice. So I'm gonna click on the welcome. On the left are templates, on the right are settings. I can change my font color pretty easily. There's a little font button there. If the settings disappears, it just means you've clicked outside of the text. So click back on your text button and you'll see it all opens up again. And then from here, you can change things like the transparency, for example, that's a really nice feature. You can also transform the text. You can make it larger, weird, wild stuff with the text designs. 
print on demand tip number five is using the illustrations inside of Creative Fabrica Studio. Over on the left hand side there's a few different options. I'm going to click on photos first to start and you'll see there's a whole bunch of different photographs and you can scroll down and see lots and lots of photos but at the top there's also a search feature so you can type in for example cat and that'll give you some cat designs. There's also a button right there to the right of the word cat and you can look through filters. There's lots of different options here. So I'd suggest you monkey around with the filters and have some fun looking through the photographs. To make one go into your design, just simply click it and it just populates now. Going to another one over on the left hand side is elements and this is where the troubleshooting may come in. As I look through the different elements, if you click on something like for example, I'm going to click on the Cupid here, you'll notice it's super tiny on the left hand side. In fact, it's so tiny that when I click off of it, you can't even see it. So if you're not sure what happened, just do control A, that selects everything and you'll see this little square and when I hover over the square, you'll see that I can now drag it. So I'm dragging the square and I'm making it larger and just like that, my little Cupid comes to life. I think it's interesting to note inside the elements menu, you can scroll up and down to look at different elements, but you can also scroll from the left to the right and you can see different elements as well. So when you click on an element, like the triangle for example, that wasn't readily apparent when you looked at the basic shapes option. You can also click view all and that will show you the subset. There's a 21 images inside of this subset and of course you can search as well. I'm going to type in arrow and that's like a filter and you can see here at the top I've now got a few different lines that include some arrows. There's an arrow that I can use. And of course the ultimate one here is on the left hand side. It's the graphics option. And what I like doing with the graphics option is expanding out the window. There's this expand to full screen option. When I do that it radically changes. Here I've got a bunch of graphics on the left hand side. I'm going to click on Santa Claus for example and we can see there's a whole bunch of different Santas now that come up. I really like this interface. It's pretty good. There's a little filters option here at the top. If I click on the filters option it will give me some more filter. So you can really drill down through the hundreds and even thousands of designs to try to find something that you like. Simply click outside of it now and I've got a really nice high quality Santa Claus figure that I can use for my design. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I really like using Creative Fabrica Studio. There's just so many different options. I highly recommend you check out the video description link below. Here's another video on how you can use Creative Fabrica Studio to supercharge your graphic design journey.